Hello, my name is Agatha and I am the business advisory manager from Business Station. Thank you for attending our Julie McDonald webinar series. And this time we're going to talk about effective communication. We at Business Station are proud to bring you the series of uh, these webinars as part of the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program funded by us industry. This session, Julie, we talk about effective communication and it is key for uh, building relationship and creating efficient, healthy work environments. Julie McDonald is an Olympic and Commonwealth game swimmer who has won medals for Australia at both. Julie held the Commonwealth record for the 800 meter freestyle for 21 years. Brilliant. And still holds one of the top six times an Australian has ever produced, some 33 years after seeing setting her initial record. Absolutely brilliant. I, I got jittery every single time I read that. So, Julie, without further ado, um, I'm going to spotlight to you and welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome everybody. I hope you've had an amazing week. Uh, super excited to be part of this series. Uh, we've, you know, if you haven't caught the first two, I encourage you to uh, register, obviously with registering and asking for the recording of those. I hope you've got a bit of content out of it and a bit of uh, learn something, which is the main thing. So uh, last week we had a few technical challenges, but hopefully this week um, I've nailed it because that's not one of my strong suits. <laughs> anyway, effective communication. So as Agatha said, um, I was an Olympic swimmer. Um, I've uh, had varied careers, uh, and um, I, but I've always thought about how swimming and my sport has always related to uh, business, you know, and I run my own business now. Um, so, you know, our first week was on resilience. Our second week is something I'm very passionate about, health and well-being, um, effective communication this week, and self-motivation next week, uh, which is probably going to be the hardest, I reckon. <laughs> so, effective communication. So, what is it? It's, for me, I think my understanding is the ability to navigate through adversity, to effectively adapt to change. Um, and thrive. So when we're talking about effective communication, we're talking about how do we say it? You know, um, is it our, our using our tone, our language? Um, you know, are you talking to different generations? You know, why you're saying it? What's your intention behind that communication? Um, you know, when do you say it? You know, is it time of day? There's all lots of different times that you can, um, you know, obviously there's bad times you can uh, send a message. There's always the good times. Um, you know, when you don't say it, you know, like if you're not communicating effectively, um, you're bottling it up, you're closed off um, and body language, uh, you know, pretty much says it all, you know, and so they're, they're what I'm going to talk about today. So what is... Um, effective communication. So it's imparting or exchanging of information by speaking or writing or using some other medium and means of sending and receiving information such as telephone lines or communication. So that when you Google it, that's what that says. Um, you know, you can look at different dictionary, uh, it depends on where you go for your information. Um, you know, different dictionaries will have different um, versions as well. So, but you know, it's, it's our words, it sounds, it's, uh, our physical behavior, um, everything that ties into how you're going to get that message across. So, um, also, um, so when we're talking about how you say it, right? So, when, when our moods, when we allow our moods to affect um, uh, communication, it can be quite a disaster. Um, you know, and what can affect our moods? It can be, uh, you know, you might have an event that's happened uh, to you in a car accident or something like that. Could be stress. It could be that you're under the pump at work and you've got deadlines. Um, you know, it's all going to affect the way that we uh, talk with our tone and also uh, the language that we may use and therefore um, our ability to affect, uh, communicate effectively. You know, if someone uh, is upset that I'm working with and I'll ask them, what is it that's really upsetting you? You know, was it that car accident or is it something else that you've been thinking about before that, that, you know, caused that to happen? You know, um, 
And it's easy to ignore someone who's angry or upset, but when we start asking questions, we can actually find out the deeper meaning and the deeper connection with that person and also the reasoning behind that, um, that situation or that, that anger or that burst um, of uh, anger and um, you know, energy. So then I asked them, can you change that situation? You know, um, or could you have responded differently? So when you start asking questions of people, it allows them to then take a, take a minute, right? It allows them to take a break from that feeling of anger or the feeling of frustration or whatever it is they're experiencing or the stress and just connect with them within themselves and go, what is it that I'm actually really upset about? Um, because when we allow external situations to affect our mood, you know, we're setting ourselves up for more of that to happen. You know, I'm a big believer that, um, you know, what we're, we're putting out there with our energy is what we're going to bring back. So if you're putting out there that you're angry and you're upset, um, you know, you'll find that you'll have a worse day and things will just keep happening like that. But if you put out there that, you know, oh, well, you know, it happens and, uh, and now I'm just going to focus on what I really want my achieve out of the day and you know you'll find that things good things will start happening so um notoriously traffic right traffic can create um, a lot of different emotions in us and um i had a partner who used to go crazy in if he got caught in traffic and i just said to him can you change this you know can you make the road go faster you can't make the car go faster because you're going to hit someone and, you know, always the answer was no. So I just would say to him, why stress over it? You know, if you're running late for a meeting, call the person and let them know. You know, we've all experienced being caught up in traffic um, or a situation like that. And if people ring you and say, look, I'm going to be 10 minutes late, so sorry, it's okay. They'll, you know, usually get on social media or something or do, be able to do something, send that email that they've been wanting to send or whatever it is. There's always things that they can do to wait, but if it's something like a job interview or something where it's imperative that you're on time, um, you know, I always sort of encourage people think ahead. Okay, so I always leave extra time. You know, if I'm going to be going to the city in the morning, I want to leave extra time because you just never know what's going to happen on the way. If you get there early, there's always things that you can do. You know, you're calm. You're going to stay, um, you know, in a good mood um, so that the, you're there on time. You know, but if you're stuck in traffic and um, or you're running a bit late and, and you find yourself starting to get agitated, why don't you put on your favourite music, you know, and get yourself into a happy mood, um, you know, because the chances are that you're going to get to that appointment when, and you may not get the job or you're not going to seal the deal because you're um, pent up and angry. But if you feel like put on your favourite music and you just relax and you feel good about it and it's like, you know what, I've let them know I'm coming, I'm going to be late. Um, you know, and then calm, then you're going to give off a better energy and then the day is going to go better. So um, think before you speak, okay? So if you find yourself in an awkward or heated exchange, you know, we all know nothing has ever been resolved from lashing back. Um, you know, I think pretty much everybody grew up with their parents saying two wrongs don't make a right. Um, and there's always things that you can do. You know, you can, you can either let that person vent. Um, obviously, if it's getting out of control, you know, you can take a breath and just ask them nicely, please stop yelling at me or, you know, to calm and settle that situation. Um, you know, you, then you can say to them calmly, you know, what's going on? You know, share with me calmly what's, what's happening for you right now. And then allow them, just diffuse that situation, you know, because if, if you have, or... If you happen to find yourself that you're the person yelling, you know, because you're stressed or you're angry or something's happened and, you know, and, and that energy comes up into you that in anger, I want you to remember something. When our emotions are high, our intelligence is low. So if you find yourself in that situation, take a minute because no matter what comes out of your mouth, it's not going to be received correctly and it could actually ruin relationships and ruin trust with people that you're working with. So take a minute, think about what you wanna say and how you wanna say it and how you want that message to come across. 
by staying calm allows you to get that message across and the person on the other end will receive it better. We all know that if someone, you know, we meet someone that's angry, we instantly step back and, um, and we don't want to be around them, you know, and then, you know, then go take a break, go, go out to the gym and, and, you know, box some boxing bags or, you know, go out and or put your feet in the grass and just calm yourself, find out, what it is for you, how you can calm yourself or get rid of that frustration. So language that we use, um, you know, think about who you're speaking with. You know, the obvious is no bad language is appropriate in the workplace um, and really not appropriate anywhere um, where you're dealing with loved ones even. You know, um, shortening of words doesn't come over professional. Um, you, so you need to also show respect to the person that you're speaking to because we all want respect we have to show respect you know regardless of who they are and this builds trust with people and it um or you know if you're using bad language obviously it's going to put people off that you're dealing with so who are you talking to now as australians we are notorious for abbreviating words uh making them shorter using slang um, at times, and of course, in most environments in, in the business world, um, not appropriate. But of course, the English language has been changed, you know, through the generations as well. And, you know, do you know who I blame? Um, I blame Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because what happened was they shortened it, their branding to then be KFC. Right, so this is a bit of fun, right? So then of course, it opened it up to a lot of acronyms that are used today um, by our younger generation, you know, and it become a lot diff more difficult to, to, you know, deal with the younger generation, you know? So obviously we all know laughing out loud, lol, right? So if you're a bit older, those people used to get that um, mixed up or they would take it as, you know, lots of love or, you know, whatever, but the younger kids, it's, you know, laugh out loud. BRB, I'll be right back. You know, um, if you're OMG, of course, you know, everybody knows OMG, you know, TTFN, ta-ta for now. You know, if you've got young children, if you've got children, you know, it, it's, um, I don't know about you, but I get this from my son and it's, you know, it's crazy. Now, what about this one? One, four, three. Now, if you've got young children, you may know what this is, but it's actually, I love you. Um, SMH, if you're talking to someone 45 and over, you know, I think they're, they would immediately assume that that stands for Sydney Morning Herald, right? But no, unfortunately, my son sends me this one a lot and I had to ask and it was shaking my head. So obviously disgust in what I had just told him. Um, seriously, you know, um, has been shortened. So, you know, it, um, that's a bit of fun, but it, it's, it's true, right? That people, the younger people are shortening things and, um, you know, and if you don't understand a certain language, you've got to then ask. Um, so it's just easier to use, you know, proper language when you're dealing with clients and, um, and people in the business world, because then that just saves any embarrassment and, you know, because it doesn't, doesn't look good. So timing. Um, timing can also have a big impact on, on the message that we're getting across uh, and, and getting it across effectively. If there's a deadline that the person is working on and you need to get your message across, it, they may be absorbed with their own thoughts about what they've got to do next, you know, with this project that they're working on um, and, and what's coming up. Not about, they're not thinking about what you're about to say. So ask them for a moment, you know, make eye contact and ensure that you've got their intention, their attention before you deliver the message that you want. Too many times when I was working um, in corporate, I was in a situation where I was in the middle of a project and my boss would pop his head in and go, Jules, can you do da 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 da? And then I would lose my train of thought of where I'm at with the project. And then I'd only get half the message that he would tell me anyway. So then I'd have to get up, go into his office and go, can you please, what's going on? Can you tell me what you need? Um, and, you know, and I just found that it, I lost productivity and the effectiveness of the job at hand of what I was doing. Um, so think about things like that, right? And, and most of this is common sense. Intention, 
you know, what's the message you're trying to deliver and what's the purpose of it? Can it be misconstrued construed if it's in text or email? We've all been on the receiving end of a text or an email where we're questioning what that message was actually about. You know, what was their intention? You know, was it um, meant to be sarcastic or, you know, it can, definitely comes across really poorly in text and email. So, um, you know, be, just reread emails that you're sending. And if you do feel that you're um, you're a bit heated when you're about to send an email, go walk around the block for, you know, or go walk around the office or, or go have a drink of water, then come back and, and have a go at writing the email again, and then um, reread it and think about, you know, that other person. You know, because you may have history with that person where um, situations happened before the same issue. Uh, so you've got to think about how they're going to receive it. Um, and is it, if it's a message that you are trying to, um, uh, you know, some, some um, feedback, you know, just make sure that it's constructive. Hand gestures, just, I am terrific for hand gestures. <laughs> so, um, you know, with, uh, with hands gestures, you know, a lot of people um, may not notice, you know, they may, may just may just sort of think, oh, yeah, they use their hands a lot. They're Italian or whatever, you know, but hand gestures and body language is a big revealing factor of how we communicate and the message that we're actually really sending. So palms up, you might see a politician with their palms up and they're talking about, um, they're talking about to you about a particular thing. That, that's a sign of that they're offering honesty and trust and that you appear more credible. You know, people clap, they might be excited and they're enthusiastic about something. Um, if someone's rubbing their hands together, they're obviously cold or they could be a bit nervous about what uh, the meeting they're about to have um, or they're, they're actually going to, they're sealing the deal. You know, we've sort of all experienced somebody that's um, doing that. Now, here's one that you're going to incorporate every day of your life. Um, well, maybe not last year, but um, you know, this year we're back to shaking hands and uh, hugging, I'm a hugger. So, uh, you know, shaking hands. So we've all experienced uh, the dead fish handshake. Uh, we've experienced that handshake where someone's tried to crush our hand, um, you know, and it, it's, it's really not necessary. Um, you know, it's, if someone, if I accidentally, you know, sometimes we can come in and ask, you know, shorten our hand uh, and, and you just feel really awkward, I just say, can I shake your hand again, please? You know, because I really like that firm handshake um, because it just is that nice exchange between somebody and, you know, and it does really portray the type of person you are. So um, what about, you know, if um, someone is, is dominating, you know, they're gonna squeeze really hard. Um, the best way, obviously vertically, it's great respect for someone else and um, and, and uh, you're showing them your respect. So we've all seen this pose, um, someone gripping their hands behind their back. That's, uh, you know, an authority sort of stance. You'll see a lot of um, politicians or uh, CEOs or they're standing like that when, they, when they've got one hand behind the back. It just, they're, they're fearless. You know, they, they know that they're in control and they feel that they um, are authority. Um, you know, the... You know, you, the, we all experienced this with, um, you know, moving forward, you know, Julia Gillard with her uh, constant downward um, hand movement drove me insane, got to tell you, but it made me really start looking into uh, body language and how, you know, that can really affect your conversation with somebody. So it was always really interesting. And, and she would have been told that, you know, exposing her wrist like that uh, would make her appear more honest. So um, this is one that I've experienced uh, a, a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but uh, occasionally. So um, the dominating handshake, right? So if you, um, th there's someone super powerful um, and it's normally a male, um, is gonna come in and he's, he's coming in with his hand like shape, you know, over like that to come and shake my hand. Um, for those ladies that are watching this, um, this is the way that I get around this uh, scenario. and. Um, I come in and I grab their hand, um, like just like my picture is like that. And then I turn it so that it's almost like they're going to kiss my hand, you know. So, um, you know, I 
people that have, uh, you know, coming in like that, you know, they kind of want to dominate you, you know, make their stand. So I just kind of diffuse that situation and, um, and you know, offer my hand that way. So it's a, um, it's a kind of a little bit of a dig at them. Um, but, you know, I'm a bit of an Aussie larrikin. So, um, you know, that's just my own little take on it. So here's a really great quote. Um, the greatest compliment that was ever paid to me was when um, one asked me what I thought and attended to my answer. So, you know, when, when people ask us for our opinions, you know, or our thoughts on something, you know, it's because they value us. So, um, you know, what, now, what, what are some barriers that we might come across with effective communication? You know, uh, you, know you might have um, some history with somebody and you're, uh, they're talking to you and you might be sitting there judging them. Right. You might be uh, criticizing them for whatever reason um, your whatever you're thinking in your mind, your body is going to portray that. Right. So you and it's actually going to reveal to them how you actually feel about them. Um, you know, there's no way that the message is going to get across. It's going to be, um, you know, a breakdown in communication and it will cause issues down the track. If you're not paying someone attention. So. If you're playing with your phone uh, or if you're actually just off with the fairies, you're thinking about, you know, what you've got to cook for dinner, um, what's the next thing that you want to say, um, you know, if you're thinking about anything else apart from what they're saying, you're not going to get the message, they're not going to feel heard and uh, another breakdown of communication. Technical language. So if you're in a conference um, and you're delivering a, a message to your clients or to, to people that are watching it or, you know, delivering a webinar, don't use technical language. You know, things, acronyms and uh, or language that is relevant to your industry or your service or profession, because um, most people may not know what that is, you know, and you'll lose people, they'll lose interest, and then they're not going to get your message. Um, so I always think about the person, I'm thinking about the other person, I'm, I'm putting myself into their shoes and saying, will they understand this? You know, I worked in an industry for a little while um, where I actually um, thought about that whoever was going to read this next bit of information, if a five-year-old could understand it, that there was going to be no problems, right? Because I used to work in events, I used to be an event manager and I would complete the file and then hand it off to somebody else to actually run the event. And so that I, I just sort of thought about it. Okay, so if a five-year-old was reading this information, would the event run smoothly? So, you know, that might be a way that you can, you know, think about how that person receives information because we're all a bit different. Um, you know, unwanted advice. Nobody likes to be told what to do. Um, and we, and really, we only want to be given advice if we've asked for it. So, if you haven't been asked for it, don't offer it, you know, and uh, don't definitely don't be opinionated. Um, avoiding the co concerns of others. So when someone is, comes to you for advice and you're concentrating more on what you want to tell them or what's more important to you rather than addressing what is their concern, um, you know, there's no problem solving with that. There's no connection. There's no trust. Um, and there's definitely not going to be any effectiveness. So here's nine effective communication skills. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number one, active listening. So too many people use two mouths and one ear, right? So we're all born with two ears and one mouth. And we've heard this over and over again, but not many people know what effective listening is. You know, and it's not a it's about being present with that person and you know, sometimes repeating in your own mind what they're saying, you know, so that you can get the message or, um, you know, you've got to be alert with them and you just, just be interested in that person. Um, no matter how long they're talking, you know, we've all experienced that situation where that person just does not be quiet. They just keep going on and on and on. Just don't interrupt. Let them be heard. They may be somebody that doesn't feel like they've ever been heard before, and you know, then you could ask them questions so that they really feel like you're interested in them, and that you know you're in what in one, what they want to say and getting the message across. So, a good way to understand what the other person is saying, you know, and and make them feel as heard is repeating 
back to them, you know, a summary. So what you're saying is blah, 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 you know, because then they, they go, oh, you know, yes, exactly. And, and, you, and if you ever do that to somebody, you watch the reaction that you get because people aren't used to it. You know, they're not really used to being heard. Nonverbal, as I mentioned before, um, we're always transmitting messages through body language. And uh, so be aware, are you aware of what your, or your message that you're putting out there? You know, like we've all seen the, you know, arms crossed, you know, people with the legs crossed, you know, it's always a sign of like, oh, are they, are they really not interested or are they cold, you know? Um, and so I'm always conscious about where I put my arms when I'm talking to somebody because, you know, most women don't have pockets, so we can't put our hands in our pockets. Um, but, you know, and I, don't, and I don't like to, you know, look like I'm not interested. So it's, it's being aware of what you're doing and, and taking a bit of more conscious um, effort with that. What tone of voice you're using? Are you using eye contact with that person or your eyes, you know, darting all around the place? We've all talked to somebody that, you know, they're looking around to see who the next person coming is or whatever. They're not paying attention. It's distracting. So when you're having a conversation with someone, look them in the eye. Be interested. So whatever comes along later, you know, don't worry about it. If the if the phone rings, you know, it doesn't have to be answered straight away, unless you're a doctor, of course, and or on call or something like that. Um, so be aware of what body language you're you're putting out there. Ask questions. Um, what is everybody's favorite topic? Themselves, right? So when you ask somebody questions, um, you know, people think you are the most interesting person in the world. So there was a study done um, where a guy was flying from um, one side of New York to the other, and he was given a task on that he had to find out as much information about the person that he sat next to as he could during that flight and not talk about himself at all. So when they got to the other end of the, um, when they got to New York, uh, that person that was asking all the questions, he got off and, and the, the person that was doing the survey, you know, asked him what he found out. The person that he asked the questions to, they asked him, you know, tell us a little bit about the guy that you sat next to. And their response was, he was the most interesting person they'd ever met. So, People love talking about themselves, right? So when you ask questions, they're going to, you know, get more engaged and you're going to build that, that trust. So what are some type of questions that you can ask? You know, open questions. Open questions start with what and how. It's how you find out about somebody, what their passions are, what their interests are, all about their family, um, what their problems are if you're a problem solver. Closed questions, questions that start with did or do or would or will or should or could or have or must. Um, and you usually get a yes or no answer. It's not very effective communication and it's a lot harder to get information from someone and, you, and you know, not, very, not a great conversation. Um, specific questions that can start with when, where, who, which, how much, how many and how often. Um, is another way to get to know somebody and find out more information. Or visionary questions, right? What are your dreams? Most people I work with have forgotten how to dream. They don't have any goals. They don't have any dreams. They've not thought about it. Dreams were squashed many, many years ago um, by somebody who said you could never do that to them. So um, being clear and succinct. You know, when you're speaking, be clear, articulate, um, and concise. You may need to slow down your language, right? You may need to slow down because a lot of people that talk really quickly, it's not effective. Um, you want people to absorb the information. And we've all heard that saying that less is more. Clarifying and summarizing, like I said before, you can reflect the what your summary of the conversation is back to that person to make sure that you fully understand it and that you're getting the message that they want you to receive. Um, you know, and obviously that, that they'll think you're, that you're super interesting as well. Being empathetic. Empathy is someone that is a, uh, has the ability to understand and share feelings with another person. Um, you know, how often have you put yourself um, uh, in a situation of, um, oops, sorry, of my slides weren't working. 
um, you know, put yourself in the in the feelings of someone else. You know, this was a great quote I saw for active listening. The most basic of all human needs is the need to understand and be understood. The best way to understand people is to listen to them. Um, sorry about that. So effective, you know, um, the sympathetic versus empathetic. So sympathetic, the guy, you know, the poor little child has broken her teddy bear and the person's and her friend's gone, oh, that's too bad. But empathetic is, hey, look, I've got a, you know, a, um, a sh some string, let's, let's fix it together. You know, so it's solving problems together. Um, you know, providing feedback, as I mentioned before, whether you're giving it or receiving it, it is a very vulnerable space to be in. We all say we want feedback on certain things, but mostly what we're asking for is con positive or constructive feedback. Whereas someone without a tact gland might, you know, give some feedback that's very hurtful. And that's not the idea. So when giving feedback, please make sure that it's a constructive way and a kind way and include that person's strengths, you know, acknowledge their strengths. Developing trust and rapport. Trust is a super important skill to build. You know, we all want trust with people with we're working with and we're coming in contact regularly. So some people I know expect trust and respect, um, but you've got to earn it, you know, and trust is by doing things that you say you're going to do. That's how you build trust. You can um, destroy trust by, you know, showing lack of, concern, uh, lack of care or concern for somebody amongst other ways, you know. Being present. So as I mentioned before as well, you know, being present with that person, um, it this links all of those skills together. You know, it's about concentrating on that person, being attentive when you're talking to somebody, uh, not half listening because you're on, on the phone or you're thinking about the next thing that you want to say, um, but thinking about that person and listening to them. Um, you know, and we can all win with effective communication. It makes our lives easier, a lot less stressful um, if we just follow some simple guidelines. And the, you know, some of the most important things are be present, listen effectively and intently and understand somebody else. So um, now we have our amazing panel that, um, and that we're going to introduce today. And we've got, uh, with us today, we've got Tanya Begg, who has 20 years experience. Uh, her focus is on business growth through organizational strategy, development encompassing leadership capability and team development. We've got Dante, um, he is a fascinating man. When we had him on our first uh, call, I could have listened to him all day. Um, his strength lies in the digital space with a background in digital and um, traditional media since 1996. He's an accredited Facebook community trainer and holds over 82 individual technical certifications, an amazing resource. Um, Casia, she is a passionate about digital marketing and communications with over 14 years experience. And for the last five years has run a boutique digital, digital marketing consulting business, big mouthful, um, specializing in social media marketing, content creation, that's, isn't that a challenge, and public relations. Um, and Chasira Lee, we've, she's an expert in startup of small business. She's gone through it herself from inception. She can help you from that to growing your business. And, you know, she's passionate about the environment and social justice. And her career has spanned a range of industries from healthcare, local, state and federal governments and non-for-profit. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Hey, Julie, that was so insightful. I'm inviting all the uh, panelists now to uh, unmute yourself uh, and actually turn your video on. And I'm going to put gallery view so everyone can see everyone. Absolutely brilliant. And welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. Julie, once again, thank you. Oh, my goodness. I feel like listening to you. I'm like, guilty, 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 <laughs> guilty. I know. We've all been guilty of it. Exactly. 
<laughs> and it's, we all know about it. It's just, uh, in fact, that's a fantastic reminder. All right. Um, first of all, I guess, uh, thanks for the intro for all the panelists. What I'm going to also do, probably give two minutes each or, or you know, take your time. But um, let us know a little bit about what you think, your take about what Julie mentioned, um, and also what you can offer as part of the ASPAS program, probably um, helping on this effective communication. We'll start usually ladies first, but how about this time, gentlemen first, Dante, go right ahead. Hey there, I knew you were going to do that for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. I'm Dante St. James, based out of Darwin in the Northern Territory, but a bit of a digital nomad these days. I spend about half of my time in other places, particularly in North and Southeast Queensland, Northern New South Wales, and Western Australia too, in the top end of Western Australia at the moment. Um, what I specialize in and probably best known for is my work with Facebook Australia as a community trainer, lead global trainer as well. And um, with their media planning, media buying kind of department as well. Um, but what I also work with is a lot of websites. I've got my own digital agency that I've been running for the last oh, four or five years now. And um, I've also <laughs> done everything from making TV ads to, to radio ads, being on radio and was originally a doctor. So I've <laughs> got all all these things and um, I was listening to very much to what Julie was saying about all those communication techniques and going wow this is like basic psychology that I was learning back in the 90s this is basic stuff but we still make so many mistakes and um, so I'm constantly doing a lot of um, webinars free webinars just like Julie's ones on ASBAS and available for one-to-ones as well uh, working with specifically this year a lot of those kind of businesses have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19 so we're talking hospitality um, tourism based businesses a lot of those service businesses that really do rely on people coming into stores or into places to meet with them so hopefully i'll get to work with you as well soon back to you aggie thanks dante appreciate it. that's fantastic okay now uh, we're gonna go to kasha and you know this is your first time kasha so welcome and introduce Hi. yourself and what, what do you think about i know you're all about also content creation so that's effective communication uh, give us a little bit about what you do and yes your introduction thank you i really enjoyed that because um i really find it fascinating how so much of everything that makes up marketing and content creation really does come down to human psychology and the emotion that evokes. And um, yes, I work with a lot of clients with regards to coming up with a story, a campaign, uh, and really what it always comes down to is effectively communicating and putting across a simple message to their ideal target customer. So what I guess I'm trying to get at is that you can have the you know, best, most effectively structured campaign on any platform in the world. But if you don't know what you're trying to say and what um, value you're trying to give through your messaging, then it's not going to work. So I think it's just super important for anybody who's looking to market any message to really come back down to the basics and think about the way they are expressing themselves, communicating, and is it clear what they're trying to portray through their uh, words or marketing message really so um, yeah that was great I think I'm going to re-listen to this again actually because thank you yeah, we will really be sending great. it is recorded we will be resending it uh, sorry we will be sending it through to all everyone's attendees and and it'll be on our YouTube channel all right mm -hmm. now we go all the way back to Mackay and Queensland Tanya please the floor is yours <laughs> Thank you, Agatha. Yes, as I said, I'm in Mackay, North Queensland, and I work with businesses around their strategy and business plan, and also then fall into leadership capability and team performance and change management. Communication is a huge part of that work that I do with people, and when we're developing their, their business plan, their strategy, one of the first things that we're looking at, because it's foundational, are the communication avenues within the business. So how do we actually communicate with each other um, where does our innovation and creativity come from? You know, with our team and making sure those communication avenues are effective. But I also talk to them about the communication outside of their business, which obviously goes to what Dante and Kasia are talking about. Because if you don't have a strategy in place, you don't have that communication in place, and are able to deliver on what you the message you're putting out there to the world, then you know that can be very difficult for you. So I've had quite a bit of experience doing workshops for people around communication and also providing clients with information on the do's and don'ts of working with each other. So understanding where communication can break down, 
which is very interesting. So I've enjoyed this today. Ah, lovely. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Tanya. That was fantastic. And back to the studio, which is Chess, obviously, actually next door. So Chessera, uh, let's introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. So thanks, Julie. That was fantastic. Again, I think the closing tips on being present and actively listening, crucial. Um, so I'm based in Perth, as Ag said. My my work is is typically working with um, startup businesses. So you know, generally the really early phase, um, we we're doing what's called general needs assessments. So we're providing sort of a really really good um, overview in terms of where the companies should start, um, particularly in terms of strategy and goal setting. Um, so communication, as Tanya said, it, it, it's one of those crucial elements that, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people go into business not necessarily having the skills, not only in terms of, um, you know, communicating uh, verbally, but also the understanding what the communication tools might be available in terms of from a business perspective, um, and also the written communication skills. So there's a whole range of things that we can assist with there. Uh, thanks, Jess. Absolutely. That's brilliant. Okay, we go straight to the Q&As. And this is the, you know, the mid-tier bit of, of course, uh, and fun bit of the session. Uh, thank you for all the questions, guys. Do uh, pop it in into uh, this Q&A bottom. One question, and this is, I love this because, you know, a lot of us probably been here, uh, is when you have a heated exchange, but you didn't see it coming. What is a smart thing to do in the five minutes after it stops? So the winding down, I guess, after heated exchange. All right, we'll probably start with Julie. What do you think about this, Jules? Um, I wouldn't normally let it go for five minutes. <laughs> I think I, if someone, if like it was a heated exchange, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't like confrontation. I try to dispel it very quickly and find out what what's behind it. You know, because it's it. You know, whether something's broken down in the business, there's usually another reason why that person's already agitated, right? So that's that's me. I'm into the personal development. Um, so I'm going to go, okay, let's calm down. Let's. There's nothing that we can't fix uh, with, a, with a decent conversation and a calm one. So you want to, I just like, diffuse it very quickly. But then the last, in the five minutes after, once you've worked out all that solution, then you just go, you know, um, you could just have that com open conversation with that person. Go, hey, um, you know, next time if you if you see something coming up like this, like just come to me, you know, just come and share it. Don't, there's no no need to get agitated, um, you know, and just be real with that person. You know, I just find that the best way. Thank you, Julie. No, that's absolutely fantastic. Dante, do you want to add to that? Walk away. There's nothing that can be in the heat of. Um, of all that adrenaline rushing through your system you haven't got the offsetting of uh, like the serotonin in the right levels to be able to reply from anything other than emotion and um, like julie was saying earlier the enemy of any sort of rational decision making is emotion emotions are very important but when they when you've just been attacked from the outside it's the wrong time to start replying this is not the time to write an email or make a phone call walk away make a cup of tea probably not a coffee that'll just make it worse make a cup of tea and just have a good light like just sit down breathe use whatever the techniques you've got whether it's meditation or breathing or whatever i just take breath so I just go and then that's that's enough to calm me down to then come back to it with a sense of rationality and with also the attitude of i'm ready to fix this problem now i'm not ready to react to this problem i love it chamomile tea definitely uh, kasha what do you think about that yeah, the, the line that stuck in my head from Julie's um, talk earlier was when our emotions are high, our intelligence is low. So uh, it's so true. And um, what Dante said as well about breathing, uh, you know, I think it's something like six deep breaths can actually reset your, you know, stress um, management system, so to speak. So, yeah, and I never, ever put anything in writing when I'm angry. Uh, I guess if I do, I draft something and I sit on it and then I wait till the next day and 99.9% .9 of the time, I'll never send it. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Good tip. I'm going to do that. Thank you, Kasha. Don't oh, yeah. Know. It's sometimes yeah. therapeutic yeah. just to write it down, but they're that's not right. actually, you know, and it sometimes helps you process your thoughts. But, uh, yeah, no good result ever came from sending or saying something from an angry, emotional place. 
That's right. Disconnect your internet, write it so you can't send it. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. 100%. Uh, uh, hmm. Thanks. Tanya, what do you think? Uh, yes, similar to uh, the other responses, I would leave it. I wouldn't be getting involved in it because really, if you didn't see this coming, it's actually something that's been burning for this person for quite some time. They've had enough triggers that have then created this pinch or crunch, the behaviour that you're seeing. Um, I'd wait, you know, maybe at least 24 hours before you go back to resolve and say, hey, what happened yesterday? And you may actually, you may not have been the reason or maybe you were. And so maybe it's that you know, time to say, okay, I didn't know I was triggering you, um, you know, I won't do that in the future. So it's coming to an agreement about how you're going to work together in essentially. Um, but leading off from what Kasia was saying, alternate nostril breathing will also calm you down or just simply breathing through the right nose. <laughs> just don't go to sleep. Uh, good, good, good. No, I love it. That's right. Uh, and Jess, uh, what do you think? Any additional yeah. to that? Look, same, same in terms of breathing. I think the five minutes afterwards, that's the crucial time. Take a few deep breaths I think the opportunity to reflect too um, just see if there's anything that perhaps you didn't think about at the time or that you could learn from it and then potentially the follow-up as well you know if it's not resolved so that's pretty crucial Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Great answers. Very good tips for everyone there. Okay. This, uh, and this is a, a very good question here. Um, we're talking about effective communication and nowadays it's digital communication. You, you don't even get a chance to actually talk to people in live. So why has communication or communicating via social media become so important these days? And, you know, probably the outset of this question is how do we do it right? Uh, we'll probably start with Kasia because she is, of course, uh, you know, a social media expert as well. Yeah, thank you. Well, I mean, let's face it, as you said, so many of us are living online these days and um, social media platforms are a great way of actually keeping your customers or potential customers up to date with regards to any information you'd like them to know. But one huge thing here is that it builds trust as well. Uh, so a lot of people are using social platforms such as Instagram to inform them on their journey before they actually transact with a business or service provider. So uh, when there's prompt and effective uh, communication and responses, um, it shows that it's coming from an actual human being and it's not just a front. So, yeah, it really does build trust and it um, forms a strong connection with actual people that can you know be a long-term thing so it should not be overlooked at all um and also it's um you know one last thing it's pretty much like social media etiquette it's like having good manners if somebody came up to your storefront physically and asked a question you wouldn't ignore them so you know responding to all queries in a timely manner um it's just um a really smart and essential way to run your business I love it. Thank you. Yes, definitely, Kasia. Um, Tanya, we'll go with you. Do, you. do you have any add-on to the digital world that we live in and social media communication? The only thing I was thinking about is this, This, I think this started a very long time ago when we all started having individual emails at work and people started emailing each other, but even though they were sitting right beside each other. Um, but I, I, along the same lines, I think it's important, and, and Julie touched on this, about being really aware of you know how you are communicating via social media and whether it's via your messaging or whatever it else may be you know be aware of the wording what it looks like you know is it sending the message that I want it to send because it can be misconstrued so easily and you know don't write in capital letters either in bold and red <laughs> it can all be yeah. misconstrued and taken the wrong way <laughs> That's right. And then you don't do it while you're in an after heated agreement, a uh, heated exchange. Uh, Chess, what do you think? Um... Yeah, I mean, I touched on the need for business communication tools before. And I think that social media is just one of those one of those avenues. It's it, and a powerful avenue, of course. But um, I think, like Kasia said, it's it's absolutely crucial for knowledge sharing and trust building. Um, and that's why it's all pervasive, I suppose. 
Absolutely. I will go for Dante last because he works for Facebook. <laughs> so we'll go with Julie first. Uh, sort of Julie, what do you think about that and social media? I know you're also, you know, I am following your page and it's important for you as a, a public figure as well. What, what, what do you think about this? Yeah, it's an interesting one. And I think probably something we could talk for hours on. But, um, you know, I think it just certainly has that element of um, that, you know, building trust, but then also that uh, people have can have, then have a misconstrued idea about somebody's life, right? Because um, everything is fantastic on Facebook land, you know, and when behind the scenes, there's actually their lives are falling apart. So it's really being able to read between the lines. But for me, it's about being able to communicate with everybody. Um, you know, I, I work with people all around the world. So uh, for me, social media is massively important because um, I can post something and then, you know, my UK friends will see it later and the US friends will see it that night. Or um, So for me, that's that's what's important for me. I love it. Thank you, Julie. And of course, with that comes responsibility. And because you do have a platform now, it's everyone has got a platform to speak up. Uh, and Dante, what do you think? I know, I know you're uh, a big promoter of this, but how important is it? And what is the strategy around this? For someone who doesn't know you, their first impression of you is going to be what they're going to read online. Um, I know that when I've gone to hire people in the past, my first impression is what I see from their Facebook profile, their Instagram profile, their communication. LinkedIn. LinkedIn way they write to people so the important thing is there is for someone who has no body context no picture of you no previous context to work from on what you are like to communicate with the way that you communicate through your posts on social media are basically what they expect to encounter so if you communicate poorly if you're cutting off words if you're so colloquial that you come across as like a hillbilly well then yeah they're going to expect that that's how it's going to be to deal with you in business if you are clear you articulate your words well you're using plain english that's easy for people to understand they'll feel safe to be able to deal with you as a person who can be easily understood and is easy to work with Fantastic. Thanks, Dante. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, this is a question that's really, really good. Of course, very relevant. Um, the fact that it's International Women's Day, uh, you know, 8th of March. Um, what is your advice? And I'm going to invite every panelist to actually give this advice uh, for communicating with women effectively. Uh, sorry, what is your advice uh, for women to effectively communicating in professional contexts, where it's a trap uh, for blokes. I think so, I guess, uh, you know, where you work with mostly blokes and how do you communicate? So you're not going to be perceived as one of them, but you have to be uh, accepted, accepted by, uh, you know, most of them or all of them. Uh, you know, we'll start, I don't know who wants to start first. I know the, the question is very good, but it is a hard one. Um, how can we communicate better as a woman where your, your environment are all male? I think um, actually yes, the question is um, for communicating with women effectively in the professional context, is it a trap for blokes? Oh, yes. Sorry, I, I must have misunderstood the question. Thank you. That's right. no, all right. All There's good. a comma in the middle there. I know. It's tricky. Okay. Communication is tricky, you know. Um, exactly. So I think for me, it's, well, whether you're female or male, um, everybody deserves your respect and, and to be able to speak to them respectfully uh, in the workplace, you know, and, and I think, you know, obviously there's times at the moment where um, there's been uh, abuse of that situation and uh, that and people have been on the receiving end of, um, you know, whether it's uh, flirting or whether it's um, bullying or whether, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of um, uh, abuse it is as such, it's then, you know, I, I just don't think it's called for in the workplace no matter what sex you are what um you know or who you're dealing with and I think you know just treat people with respect and common and just use nice language you know I don't I certainly if, if someone uses a word that I don't appreciate and I'm, I ask them please don't use that word in front of me um you know don't be afraid to speak up and and you know and just and most women don't want to hear foul language in the workplace so that's probably a good start no, thank you. That's spot on, Julie. And thanks for clarifying that. That's definitely a you know, great communication example. Um, Chess, what do you think about that, Chess? 
Yeah, look, I completely agree with Julie. I don't think there's a different tact that needs to be taken, whether it's a female, whether there's cultural issues, whatever it might be in terms of who you're talking to. I think if you keep in mind all of those um, key listening skills that you talked about, Julie, and also effective communication skills in terms of, you know, being respectful, um, you know, being empathetic, um, taking those things into consideration, then I think you can't go wrong. Thank you. No, I agreed. And, you know, yes, I mean, I think the question is about women, but of course you mentioned it, this cultural issue, and then there's a background environment, et cetera, so many different aspects. Everyone is different Then you know, I guess uh, the difference between people that every footprint or every, uh, yes, every DNA is different, makes it more interesting. Uh, Kasia, what do you think about this? I think just, you know, um, being respectful, like everyone said, you know, polite, courteous, and at the end of the day, being authentic. So um, like Julie was teaching us earlier, you know, it's not only about the words that you say, it's about the manner in which you deliver them and the body language that accompanies those words. So uh, people can sense whether your intent is pure or whether you're full of, you know, uh, rubbish. So um, I think just be clear about your intentions, be authentic and, um, be good to people and um, then you'll attract good energy back towards you. I love it. Thank you, Kasia. Uh, I will leave Dante for last, of course, Dante, because <laughs> this is this is going to be good for you to tackle. Tanya, what do you think? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I'm answering this question um, coming with 15 years of you know, working in a male dominated industry. I'm, I'm not in there now, but I had 15 years of that. And, um, you know, I, I don't think it should be a special thing, but the reality is, is that there are things that we should say and things we shouldn't say. And straight off when I looked at that question, I, I went straight to thinking about discrimination, harassment, bullying, whatever it may be, which can happen to anybody. So I think it's, it's, for the broad spectrum, not just when you're working with women, um, you need to build that rapport with people and understand them and understand what is okay and what is not okay. And But also be conscious of the fact that even you might say something today and it's okay, but tomorrow it may not be. So I think you have to read um, the situation, but also the person and how well you know each other as well. Yeah, thanks, Tanya. Absolutely. And you know what, this actually goes uh, both ways. I mean, uh, is it a trap for women the way we talk to men and etc. Right. So it's, it's, it's definitely knowing what to say and how to say it is it's definitely a great thing. Dante, all right. What do you think about this? I know, actually, I think Dante, um, your organization that you're working at at the moment is mostly women. So that's <laughs> share with us. So my team at both Facebook and at Treaty Business Consulting are 90% women. And I'm very comfortable in that environment. Now, I, I look like a biker with my tattoos and my clipped hair, and my big beard and all that. So sometimes people tend to miss me, misread me a little bit upon first um, glance in the distance. I go, who is this big hulking biker dude coming down the road? But what you do is the same thing you do for men, for women, for everybody. You have to create a safe environment. People will only work with you and will only commit to working with you if they feel safe. If you come lumbering in and going, oh, I just had a bloody awful day and it was also, look, it's just not going to set up a very good, a good, very safe place for people to feel they're working. You come in with anger, um, that's what's presented straight away. You come in with frustration, that's what's presented straight away. No amount of trying to correct your body language and all that. Getting yourself into the right state is going to be really important for any kind of communication. So I find that working with women, the first thing I've got to do is sit down, shut up and let this woman tell me what she needs. It's not about me coming up with a solution. It's about me listening to what the answers are that she already is giving me. She's already telling me exactly the solution she needs. Me trying to cut in and match her with a product or with a service is not helping her. Listening to her and allowing her to actually express what she needs to get done is going to help me so much in getting that thing done. So active listening is a big thing I want to do. So when I'm actively listening to someone, I'm not just hearing them, I'm letting them know that I'm hearing them. 
nodding my head, repeating back. So what you're saying is you want to repeating back so someone feels understood. It may be a woman thing, but I think it's a human thing. When we feel understood, we feel safe. We feel like I can work with this person. And that's how you want to move forward with someone. So what is, it's universal. It's the same for anybody. Make someone feel listened to. Make someone feel like they actually can have confidence in your solutions. And you'll be just selling like crazy in no time. Uh, thanks, Dante. You're just a cuddly big bear. <laughs> All right, we're, exactly. We're running out of time, but it's been such a fantastic uh, session. Julie, if you don't mind, just give us one key takeaway for effective communication before we close the session, please. Shut this. Use these. I <laughs> uh, love it. Love, love, love it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Julie. And thank you for Dante, Tanya, Kasha, Chess for joining us today. Um, I won't be joining next week, but Rebecca, which is the uh, incubator manager at Business Station, next week will be joining and moderating this. You're in good hands. Uh, she's all, also in wellness and health, uh, allied health in uh, Wanneroo. So this session brought to you by Business Station through the Asbest Digital Solutions. We're delivering series of webinars, online workshops, one-on-one, -on -one, all small business help to help small businesses across WA, Queensland and NT. And thank you so much, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.